I have, from the very outset, listened with a lot of interest to the previous orator, who has not, uh, just like her colleagues on the other side of the House, thought that it would be proper to point the finger at the members of the opposition and to teach us our jobs. Uh, and then there is something that I keep on learning at all ages, sir. It is the ability of people to multitask, such as herself. She has shown us that she has the ability to Photoshop photographs and use Photoshop photographs. It takes technique. Yes. I wonder if this is uh, relevant to the budget speech and what he's speaking on. Also, because this is speaking on, this is speaking on personal uh, and of, a, of a honorable member. And also, without even verifying whether such things are true or false, he's making statements in this August House. So, so honorable member, you were not here. The whole thing started not with you, not with somebody else, but with a lady and who mentioned a few sentences and this is what she's rebutting. I'm helping you to understand the whole context. <laughs> she, she's been rebutting something which I've been saying. So continue with your main speech. Main speech is that nowadays, Mr. Speaker, sir, in order to be at the service of the population, not only do we have to have a Minister of Finance who can write fine speeches for the budget debate, but we also have to have people who are experts at Photoshop. <laughs> that shows that this is in the interest of the people to place yourself where you're not in order to have the ability to do well, yeah. at least to have the perception that you exist. In any event, to come to the speech which I've already embarked upon, I heard the Honourable... Minister of Le Jongar yesterday saying that he believes it is a socialist budget. He is obviously entitled to his views. However, am I not also entitled to my views? I've heard each and every member on the other side applaud the Minister of Finance. The least I expect them from to do so is to do exactly that. Because I do not see any single one of them having the courage to say that he's wrong. That's the point. I don't see a single one of them who can depart from what is the set agreed stance to be taken by government and to think about nothing else but posterity and how he would go down in history as someone who has managed to stand for what he believes or has he had to simply be, simply be a sheep following the berger, or simply no. someone who is blowing into a you. flute. I will stop you. Why? You have this very bad habit of comparing uh, honorable members in this house to animals. Oh. Remove oh that. God. Remove that. Oh. Withdraw that question of sheep or whatever. La nuit in a berger is... Remove I is remove it. I remove it. Fair enough, I there remove no it. I'm not debating, I'm removing it, sir. Thank I remove it even much. more for you. You are a gentleman. Oh, Thank you very much. You know what but I've said it, and you, you know what I've said. Yes. And I admit nothing wrong. But in your mind, you think there's something wrong. But no, I remove it. it is wrong and wrong. Yes, obviously, your mind. I haven't got the ability to understand your mind, and I don't want to. But no, I'm removing it. you have it. to understand. This I is, cannot understand. This is, but you've removed it. Because I bear, I respect the chair. That's it. But Continue with your speech now. No more comments. I am. I am. The chair, not the mind. Now, as I'm saying, sir, the total revenue that Mr. the Minister of Finance has reminded us of is 179 billion, whereas you have an expenditure of 200 billion. You see, it is not my habit to be an expert or try to say that I'm an expert at matters concerning the economy. But it has happened that I have had to go and pull out an old book of mine, and the title being Dewitt on Modern Economics. And I do recall when I looked at that book, I was so fond of it in those days when I was in secondary school studying that book and what inflation is. 
so that I had to decipher what the Honorable Minister was not saying and what he was hiding, what he did what, what, what other people to say. Can you imagine? It is not a coincidence that not a single time has this budget mentioned the word inflation. It has been said by other members, and I say it again. It has never used the word inflation. But that book on Do It on Modern Economics is on special paper printed in India. And those were the books we obtained at the time when I was at secondary school studying economics. I haven't got the ability of the Honorable Minister of Finance, and I haven't got the art that he has to be able to hide the obvious. But there is one thing that he has made me understand, is that when he says it is a socialist budget, I was obliged to go into my old economic books and look at what exactly was the truth. There is more reason for me to believe do it on modern economics than to believe the Honorable Minister. Because do it has no interest of his own to serve as far as this budget is concerned. So do it says that whatever he says is not true. Because he refuses and refrains with, with intent not to use the word inflation. He knowingly refuses to use the word productivity. Nowhere in the budget. I've never understood how such words are avoided in a budget speech. Then I wanted to know how socialist really is this budget. The, v the individual income tax falls from 16.3 billion 2022-2023 to 15.5 billion. And those figures underlie the falsehood in that budget. From 16.3 billion individual income tax falls from 16.3 billion to 15.5 billion. But the VAT that is received from 49.4 billion to 2022-2023 to 61.5 billion estimated 2023-2024. So when one looks at the gross public sector debt, which is currently estimated at 485 billion, which will increase to June 19 to 2024 to 516 billion, and 548.934 billion in June 2025, the percentage of foreign denominated debt increasing from 23.7 to 25.5% to 26.1%, and you take that into account as well, is that the tax profile of this country is as follows. 30% I didn't interrupt him. I never interrupted him. J'ai le droit. Yes. Il a, oui, il a, il a dit. Oui. Yeah. Il a dit que pas une seule fois. Que pas une seule fois. Non, je peux répondre. One minute. Can you withdraw from the Why? I don't have to give you any reason. I ask you to withdraw. I ask you to withdraw. I ask you to withdraw. If you don't withdraw, I will name you. There should be discipline in the chamber. What's the point of order? What's the point of order? I will come to it first. No, he has to come to it. Don't you? Yes, I will come to it. I would give my ruling. But he has a second opinion. Monsieur le Président. L'honorable Mann vient de dire que je n'ai pas parlé de l'inflation du tout dans le, dans le budget. Que je n'ai pas parlé de la hausse des prix. Je l'ai parlé en français. L'inflation, c'est la hausse des prix. Vous regardez le point 515, j'en parle. 
J'ai pas besoin de dire le mot inflation, la définition de l'inflation, c'est la hausse des prix. Si vous ne comprenez pas ce que c'est la hausse des prix, l'inflation c'est la hausse des prix. OK. On both sides, on both sides of the house. Order. Oh. Order. 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 On a blue team. On a le boule pas des Order. 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 Both sides of the house order. Now you continue with the speech. Could you please withdraw the word martyr? He called me martyr. Could you withdraw it, sir? We throw that word. Yeah, we will move. Good. Now, I see that whoever and whatever I was aiming at is having its effect. Therefore, to come to it, I say it again. At no time did the minister use the word inflation in the budget. Now, I read the budget and he pronounced his budget speech for Hansard in English. And in English, which is maybe he didn't understand what he was saying, he did not use the word inflation. Now, if he said something equivalent in French, so be it. And I'll go home tonight and read it while drinking my cup of coffee. But in the meantime, I stick to what his speech was. Now, to come back to it, and maybe for the next time, if he does have a next budget, which I don't think so, he would think about using the word instead of something that may resemble it. What a weak defense. Now, what I do say, however, is the tax profile, since I was interrupted, the tax profile is basically 30% taxes on income and profits, and 67% taxes on goods and services. Today, today, how is the deficit being financed? How is government expenditure being financed? Most of the money comes from VAT. Fact. And since I hear the Honorable Minister of Finance saying that this is a progressive budget, I would like him, therefore, to rewrite the rules of economics and tell us how, since the majority of the budget is being financed through VAT, how is this progressive? And how would he reconcile this with the fact that he has gifted friends of government, the rich of this country, with a gift of reducing their tax imposition? Why does this not be underlined by the minister? He doesn't want us to realize that. He has given a gift to the richest of this country by reducing the tax imposition. I like to listen to the Honorable Minister without interrupting him. He is entitled to his views, so am I. I do not have the monopoly of knowledge, and he also doesn't. Just like he can believe he knows a few things, I do not know as much as he does. At least I'm humble enough to say so. So I refer, therefore, to documents that I've looked at. He has decided to reduce taxes for the rich. That's a fact. I read a document from the London School of Economics dated the 16th of December 2020. And it says here, I quote, Our research shows that the economic case for keeping taxes on the rich low is weak. So what is the economic case of this Honorable Minister of Finance, of this government, to bring down taxes for the rich? If he is to tell us that the reason why he brings down taxes for the rich is because this is going to kickstart the economy, I say he is wrong. Why? Another document from the Longdale School of Economics dated the 24th of January 2023, which is a research document, says, I quote, tax cuts for the wealthy only benefit the rich. Who are those rich people that this government has been in a 
hidden manner trying to protect and help les riches que ce gouvernement a essayé d'aider clairement en baissant le taux d'imposition pour les riches. Pourquoi Est-ce qu'il y a une raison économique derrière cela Tout en se vantant d'avoir baissé la, le taux d'imposition en créant 11 paliers. It is 11 different ways of hiding the truth. The truth is that you remove taxes from the rich. They were so good to criticize the former government when we had put it to 15%. They had said we were wrong. But at least we had the courage to say we are doing it openly for everyone, flat. Whereas they criticize us. And today, in a surreptitious manner, in a hidden manner, far from being transparent, they, hidden, in a hidden manner, bring down the tax pour les riches. And in another document, and he shall be more comfortable with this particular document, And it is the abolition of France's wealth tax still has no proven effect on the economy. And it is written by Audrey Tenelier. And it is published on 24th of October 2022. That is the three documents that I table. He knows more than I do in economics. That is why, as the little person who knows nothing much, I refer to the authors here who say that la stratégie économique du ministre des Finances est une stratégie qui cache la vérité. La vérité est qu'il a choisi, en connaissance de cause, de baisser la taxe pour les plus riches de ce pays. Ça, c'est une vérité. Vérité. And the authors say, those who benefit the most from it are the rich themselves. Not the poor. So, what is the point of trying to supposedly show your generosity to the poor, while at the same time being sweet in your eyes and to your beloved rich? What is the point? Come and honest with it. Say for a fact that you wanted to protect the rich. I do not know why. I do not know what to know why. But at least be honest about it. You have protected the rich by bringing taxes down for them. Fact. Now, you call this a budget, welfare budget? You call this a welfare budget? Look at the VAT. Who pays VAT, Mr. Speaker, sir? Every person in this country, rich or poor, we pay VAT. Every person. Someone who is a fisherman, someone who is a grass cutter, someone who is a sugarcane planter, someone who is a sugarcane cutter. Every person, a, a carpenter, a welder, a minister of finance, a lawyer, we all pay. A speaker, we all pay VAT. The same VAT. But not all of us have the same income. Not all of us have the same income. Therefore, the, the taux de TVA that is imposed on someone who is a carpenter, a, a petit artisan, a little lady who is working in the fields, what VAT she is paying with a salary of the minimum guarantee of 15 000, obviously is not the same weight-wise as the VAT paid by one of the listed companies and their CEO getting 3 to 5 million rupees a month. That's not the same. So don't tell me when the most of your budget is being financed by VAT, over 60%, that you are a progressive system. On the contrary, most of the deficit of this budget, of this government, most of the debts of this government is being paid by a regressive system of taxation that is called the VAT. And that is being honest. Now, what annoys me even more in this budget, I'll say what it is, Mr. Speaker, sir, is when you listen to this government, And when I hear the speech of the Honorable Prime Minister immediately after the budget, what does he say? I quote what he says in a press conference within the precincts of the National Assembly on the day of the budget speech being read. The Honorable Prime Minister said the following, I quote, Le salaire minimum, mon frère rappel, t'y augmenté à 12 075. 
et ben bénéficiaire tu peux gagner un CSG allowance of 1000 roupies. 13075. Dans sa bidze là, nous peut faire un effort supplémentaire pour capable augmenter le pouvoir d'achat, nous peut donner un soutien financier de 2000 roupies par mois sous CSG income allowance à tout bon travailleur qui touche jusqu'à 25000 roupies. And the prime minister goes on to say donc le salaire minimum aujourd'hui peut augmenter peut vinn 15000 roupies. This is what the prime minister says. The honorable prime minister sitting next to the good minister of finance of the republic barely a few centimeters away who after the budget had been presented saying that he is also after all let us not forget the honorable minister of finance said thanks to pravin kumar jagnat that we managed to bring that budget without him we couldn't the prime minister says that the salaire minimum zoji pe augmenter pe vin 15000 rupees so the question is the, as follows how do you test someone's credibility was the prime minister speaking the truth outside this house when he said that the minimum salary is now 15000 rupees the salary minimum answer that the honorable minister of finance gave at his breakfast meeting the next day was no the prime minister is not correct because the minimum wage is not increasing which is which either the prime minister could not understand what the honorable minister of finance was saying or the minister of finance could not understand what the prime minister wanted somewhere there is a problem in communication between the two you cannot have what you call a revenu minimum garanti and the prime minister calls it salaire minimum somewhere some place someone is wrong they cannot both be right but then le dindon de la farce c'est qui is the people because when they left this listening to the honorable minister of finance and when they heard the prime minister for a few hours at night the people of this country thought they would indeed benefit from an increase in national minimum wage and it would reach 15000 rupees monthly this is what they exactly understood after listening to the prime minister the next morning the dream they had was blown to pieces by the, Hon the honorable minister of finance but then i i already knew that night itself that the prime minister was wrong honorable kushal lobin will remember i already knew there was a reason why national minimum wage was not used as an expression in the budget it is not and that is why i have written to you mr speaker sir giving advance notice and also informed the minister of labor that i would at the appropriate moment in the finance bill that is going to be coming move for an amendment to the law what would be that amendment it is unfair to get someone to get 15000 rupees 20000 rupees 25000 rupees monthly part of it being from csg but at the time of his retirement it is not the figure that he gets at the end of the month that is accounted in the calculation of remuneration it is the lower figure before le revenu minimal garanti look at the workers rights act the workers rights act clearly makes reference to severance allowance at section 70 and at section 87 at the interpretation section the workers rights act qualifies what exactly is taken into account at the time of calculating severance if ever he loses his job for unjustified dismissal or there is redundancy or in one month's time in august the gift that the honorable minister gives of 2000 rupees he has to retire but he does not get on the prgf the the figure which is the highest that he will get as a minimum revenu he will get the lesser is this not unfair let us not forget let us not forget that when i will move for that amendment the only objective of mine is dans l'éventualité qu'un travailleur perde son emploi après les 2000 roupies que la compensation soit calculée 
sur le chiffre qu'il va obtenir qui inclut les 2000 roupies. Et si jamais il doit prendre sa retraite dans quelques temps, quelques semaines ou quelques mois après, que sa, la gratuité en retirement, la, la pension de la retraite qui est dans le PRGF soit calculée en se basant sur la rémunération qui inclut cette allocation qui émane de la CSG. The worker will be better off. Whereas the Honorable Minister of Finance, if we go according to what he says and we follow the annexes, then it's not sufficient. Then the worker will be discriminated against. I'm not asking the minister to do something different. He is already doing it at page 45 of the annex at B15, interim allowance to bus industry employees. You'll recall that the, the employees were getting 1,000 rupees and the annex says the interim allowance of 1,000 rupees payable to bus industry employees will be integrated in their basic salaries as from the 1st of January 2023, backdated. So therefore, if it can be done for bus industry employees, it should clearly be done in my view, for all workers of this country, because it is the same principle that I'm looking for. Another issue I'd like to address, Mr. Speaker, is the Finance Miscellaneous Provisions Bill of 2022. Last year, Mr. Speaker, you were in the chair, and I recall that there was one piece of legislation that was amended, and it was the Social Contribution and Social Benefits Act and it was amended last year. And when I read this document, which is Hansard, I see therein that Dr. Padachi, Honorable Minister of Finance, at, in that particular Hansard, he makes reference and he says, I quote, Mr. Chairperson, I move for the following amendment in Clause 67. Clause 67 in paragraph A, by inserting after paragraph 1 the following new subparagraphs, the existing subparagraphs 2 and 3 being renumbered as subparagraphs 3 and 4, and he adds there, he brings in that motion for amendment by deleting the definition of retirement benefit and replacing it by the following definition. And what he replaces it by, I read, retirement benefit means the social benefit of a monthly amount of 1,000 rupees payable for the period starting le 1er juillet 2022 au 30 juin 2023, exceeding 1,000 rupees and up to an amount specified in the second schedule payable as from the 1st of July 2023. And I read what you, Mr. Speaker, said, amendment agreed to, clause 67, as amended, ordered to stand part of the bill. The second schedule, Mr. Padachi, Dr. Padachi here in Hansard, Honorable Minister of Finance, moves to add a new schedule, and in that schedule, he adds retirement benefit, 4,500 rupees. I went to the library earlier on and asked for an actualized, updated copy of the legislation today for the Social Contribution and Social Benefits Act of 2021. As it stands... As it stands, in the definition section, in the definition section that is referred to as retirement benefit and the second schedule, as at the 1st of July 2023, the government cannot offer less than 1,000 rupees in addition. The government seems to be oblivious of that. As at the 1er juillet 2023, ce gouvernement n'a pas le droit de donner moins que 1000 roupies à, comme retirement benefit. Parce que, I read, exceeding 1000 rupees, not 1000, exceeding 1000 rupees up to the amount specified in the second schedule qui est de 4500 rupees. La loi comme elle est aujourd'hui, il est tout à fait légitime, monsieur le, le président, et cela je m'adresse directement au ministre des Finances à travers vous, il est tout à fait légitime pour que le citoyen s'attende à ce qu'il touche 4500 roupies à partir en plus sur le retirement, sur la pension de retraite. Il a tout à fait le droit légitime de s'attendre qu'il va avoir 4500 roupies à partir du 1er juillet 2023 parce que la loi le dit. 
Je ne le dis pas moi, je ne fais que lire ce qui est dans la loi, ce qui a été voté par cette assemblée l'année dernière. Quelle est la valeur d'une loi si le gouvernement l'ignore Quelle est la valeur d'une loi si le discours du ministre des Finances ne fait même pas référence à cette obligation, ne fait même pas provision pour cette obligation, ne donne même pas une explication à pourquoi alors cela n'est pas respecté. Comment se fait-il que le discours du budget ne fait même pas référence à une obligation légale du gouvernement qui est dans cette loi, qui est à force de loi, qui est de devoir donner 4 500 roupies par mois à chaque personne qui a atteint l'âge de la retraite 4 500 en plus, c'est une obligation. Alors, Monsieur le Président... La décision de ce gouvernement de tourner leur dos à cette loi, puis de cracher au visage des pensionnaires, de ne pas leur donner ce qui est écrit dans cette loi, et de venir simplement, dans l'annexe à la page 21, proposer un amendement qui est exactement ce qu'il y avait dans cette loi, en d'autres mots, 4 500 à partir maintenant 2024. Mais pourquoi alors avoir proposé ces amendements, l'honorable ministre des Finances, en 2022 Et pourquoi alors vous êtes mis debout pour proposer une motion d'amendement l'année dernière au Finance Bill pour dire 4 500 1er juillet 2023 Pourquoi Pourquoi alors ne pas respecter la parole donnée Est-ce que la parole donnée n'est plus, plus parole sacrée ah, mais non, c'est un budget socialiste, socialiste pour les riches, socialiste pour les riches amis de ce régime, n'est-ce pas Eux, et je connais beaucoup de ces amis qui, eux, n'ont pas besoin de ces pensions, eux, n'ont pas besoin d'augmentation. Alors, on vient nous dire simplement que on va donner 20 000 roupies à des jeunes et 20 000 roupies à des jeunes, pourquoi 55 ans de l'anniversaire de l'indépendance Pour une minute, je croyais que c'était à l'occasion, de, pour l'honneur de mon anniversaire, bientôt j'aurai 55. Ah non, ce n'était pas ça. Au fait, c'était simplement pour nous embobiner, pour nous faire croire que 55 est plus important que 50. Comment se fait-il alors que ce gouvernement était au pouvoir quand on a eu 50 ans d'indépendance Et pourquoi alors ces jeunes n'ont rien eu 50 ans n'était pas important. 55 est important parce que bizarrement, les élections, c'est bientôt. Et alors, ceux qui vont s'enregistrer bientôt, ces nouveaux électeurs, 15 000 à peu près, bah alors c'est une façon de se servir de l'argent qui n'est pas la nôtre, de leur donner, être généreux sans aucune structure, et nous dire, mais au moins la majorité d'entre eux vont voter pour nous. Mais moi je dis à ces jeunes, prenez l'argent, vous le méritez fort bien, au moins pour vous compter en penser, pour écouter la démagogie de ce gouvernement et les mensonges économiques de ce gouvernement. Prenez cet argent, gardez cet argent, et le moment voulu, votez contre ce gouvernement. C'est ça qu'il faut faire. Budget socialiste, Budget socialiste, après avoir écouté ce que j'ai à dire, peut-être il doit y avoir une conférence de presse demain à l'expliquer à ses aînés de notre population que tous ceux qui sont là vis-à-vis -vis de moi aiment dire « on est là, on les a aidés, on a fait... » C'est comme s'ils ont pris leur argent personnel pour donner. Nom de Dieu. Et quand cette loi que vous avez tous votée de l'autre côté de la Chambre et nous, ça à force de loi, pourquoi on ne donne pas 4 500 Allez donner une explication. Parce qu'on ne dit pas ça à la population. Ça, on le cache. Maintenant, vous voulez vous dire que vous êtes quoi Vous êtes quoi Socialiste. Socialist for the rich. Socialist for the rich. I have 10 minutes left. I have 10. So. So I have other nails to hammer in. Yeah, Let me, I have 10 minutes. Yeah, yes. five minutes left. No? no. Good. Thank you. Say it again. 
So this has been cleared. This has been cleared with the whip. That's fine. I can see that so I'm causing like, damage. You cannot replace the speaker. Like any time, you just say, "Okay, give him five minutes." No, no, don't do that. It's clear with the chief whip. But we don't need to clear. It's the time of the opposition that is used by the opposition. If it is, if it is okay, there is no problem. But don't embarrass me and don't embarrass the whip. No, Mr. It's Speaker. like in chamber that cross cross arrangement in chamber like this. Mr. Speaker, it you're not doing your work, both of you. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, may I continue? It's government that is embarrassed, we, and that was never the intention of my honourable friend to embarrass you. If he has, I apologise on his behalf. If, I, if he has, we apologise on his behalf. But let me continue embarrassing government now. Now, you're talking about knowing exactly what you're doing. You know, just a small mistake. Look at that one. I look at page 82 of the annex, and I was so happy also. You know, I thought I'd join the bandwagon and say, oh, wait a minute. And let me tap la tab also and say, well, there is the name of a school in my constituency there. Uh, 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 I heard it. And when I look here, and I go, but why is it classified under constituency number two? Have they changed the borders? Oh, no. It's just because the officers of the Ministry of Education don't even know where the school is. And they put it in at constituency number two when it's in constituency number three. And quite a distance away. Abdul Rahman Abdul Government School, a project that started back when I was minister. Tender documents had been made for renovation of the school. 2023, it's not even over. Alex expliquer ça à votre collègue vice-premier ministre, le docteur Osnou. Al expliquer ça à Salim Abbas Mahmoud, qui choisit de ne pas être présent. Al expliquer ça aux électeurs de la circonscription numéro 3. Comment se fait-il qu'en 2014, un projet de rénovation d'une école est lancé par le gouvernement précédent. On est en 2023, nom de Dieu. Et on vient parler de rénovation qui n'a même pas été complétée. Oh my God, that is efficiency. That's why you don't use the word. That is productivity. That's why you don't use the word in the budget. Because you do not know what it means, sir. And then we look at what they do. The sports infrastructure in my constituency. Plein Verte, Quand you love, Rochebois. Under renovation, years after years after years, still not finished. Plein Verte even had a case of a victim of electrocution due to the existing electrical system, which is faulty, and had to undergo surgery and was sent to casualty at City Clinic. And obviously, pas au frais du gouvernement, pas au frais de sa majesté, comme on peut le dire, mais bien sûr, c'est les citoyens de l'endroit qui ont aidé, parce qu'il y avait négligence de la part du gouvernement, manque de maintenance, électrocution, et partout vous allez, vous allez, va le taper l'estomac, va le taper la table pour dire, oh, chez nous, il y a ça, chez nous, il y a ça, come and see, we're having a game of balls. Very good. Rochebois, very poor pitch state, with de a defective electrical system. And what do they expect people in Rochebois to play without a goalpost there? There's a goalpost missing. And this is, they were ready for municipal elections, by the way. They were ready for municipal elections. Military road, no lighting. Synthetic pitch, bad state, bad condition, urgent need of renovation for years. Damaged public infrastructure, Cité Martial Plateau. Millions spent by this government for a, a beautiful pitch, a project I had started back in 2014. They left it on hold. Honorable Abbas Mahmoud came to me and said when he was in the opposition recently, recently, until, uh, 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 until he turned his coat and showed him loyal, God knows to his definition of loyalty what it means, he said to me, Shaquille, ne tu peux simplement faire ce qui te fin commencer? But they can't even complete it. Instead of a football pitch, now it is being broken down again because it has to be looked at again because it has become a swimming pool. Because there's no drain. Closed. And in January 2023, closed because of drainage problem. Mama Delai Stadium, no water and toilet. That is a modern government ready for municipal elections. And then Jean Lebois football pitch, very bad condition. Training 
and matches problematic. Stad Kaya, worse than ever. Base basketball pitch at Kanyolov, même pas praticable. Pétang pitch at Kanyolov and Rochebois in a poor state. Pétang pitch at Plainved Garden, no proper water supply. The construction of a water fountain with no drainage system. Can you imagine? They put a water fountain with no drainage. And they want proliferation of mosquitoes. But that's a modern government. They care. They care. Sans le 1er février, Rochebois. Leaking. Leakage. The new Dr. Idris Goumani. Millions. Leakage. You talk about green, protecting environment, and at the same time, you destroy a children's garden on Rue Magon, and you put up another building there? What? Because of the ego of certain people? But you're ready to care for people. The gardens, totally abandoned. And then, to come back to our good friend, the Honorable Minister of Finance, who has thought it fit to turn his back to the old people of this country by going against legislation that he himself voted, that every single member of this house voted. This point you've already confessed. Yes, but, I, this, but this, is the, this is the conclusion. And we're hearing the drums rolling now. And it's coming forward with a conclusion. And you'll enjoy that. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. And the title of his budget is what? The measure of a society is found in how they treat their weakest and most helpless citizens, Jimmy Carter. But maybe he should rewrite it. The measure of the society run by Padarchi is how we ignore the law and say, we don't care about you because you are the weakest. We will give it to you only when we know that the votes we are going to get in return. And then only then, this is how we treat the weak, by buying votes. Thank you very much.